So now we're looking at friction. Um, and again, we're focusing on sliding friction uh, between two solid objects, and that will be our focus for the near future. So when two solid objects slide past each other or attempt to slide past each other, um, we can model that friction force in a simple way. Uh, the details involve the peaks and valleys interacting, as you see in the sort of pullout from this picture or this diagram of a block sliding across a table or surface. Um, and then there's also some weak chemical bonding between the two surfaces um, where they touch. But that's really beyond the scope of this course because mechanics is, um, is involved, interested only in the macroscopic details, the, the, um, the macroscopic models. So for kinetic, that word kinetic is indicating movement, right? Like kinematics, kinetic. So for kinetic sliding friction, we say that the force of friction, so the notation for this book is capital F subscript lowercase fr. Um, we'll check in with the AP physics table, but I'm pretty sure that the AP physics table is capital F subscript italicized lowercase f. In any case, we're talking about friction, and it is equal to this coefficient. So the letter here, the symbol, is lowercase Greek letter mu, and it looks kind of like a curvy U with an extra tail, um, or maybe like a curvy, funky lowercase m. So mu subscript k to indicate kinetic multiplied by the normal force. So mu subscript k stands for the coefficient of kinetic friction, and it is a unitless number that uh, depends on the nature of the two surfaces. It's different for every pair of surfaces. So it depends on whether it's, um, I don't know, alder wood connecting with oak wood. Um, and it it it'd be different if it were um, steel sliding across ice. You get the picture. It's empirically determined. It's not theoretical. That is, you find mu sub k by sliding those surfaces past each other. It is, at least for our first approximation, for our only approximation for this course, it is constant. Uh, so the sliding friction between two solid surfaces does not depend on speed, um, but it does depend on the force mashing the two surfaces together, which makes kind of conceptual sense. If the two surfaces are being mashed more firmly together, then there sh it should be more difficult to slide them past each other. So that normal force term is the way we measure the amount of mashing the two surfaces together. So we've got a table from the textbook of measured coefficients of kinetic friction, and it throws in some static friction coefficients, which have not been defined yet. But you'll see that they are pure numbers. There's no uh, units, unitless numbers. Um, and they're pretty small. They're um, less than one, and they get quite small depending on uh, the type of surfaces. So synovial joints in human limbs are pretty low friction interactions. So they have a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0 0.01. Um, rubber on dry concrete, by contrast, has a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.8. So lots of friction between those two surfaces. And then things vary from there. So static friction, which was alluded to in that table just now, um, is the frictional force between two solid surfaces that are not moving past each other, but that are attempting to move past each other. So static friction keeps objects on inclines from sliding. It keeps objects from moving when a force is first applied. And you'll notice that this equation looks a lot like the previous equation, except it's got um, an unequal sign. I can't think of the name for that sign. But the force of static friction changes. It's a variable. Um, the force of static friction builds in response to the force attempting to cause changes in movement in the object up until a kind of breaking point. 
So the breaking point occurs at the maximum static friction. So we can't really calculate it using the equation unless it's the breaking point because static friction will be equal to whatever force is trying to move the object or change its movement up until that breaking point. You'll notice from the table before that the coefficient of static friction, so mu subscript s, s for static, is always small, or excuse me, always larger than the coefficient of kinetic friction. So ice on ice has a coefficient of static friction of 0.1, and ice on ice has a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.03. It always takes more force to break the bond and get the object moving than it does to maintain the movement against that friction force. The static frictional force increases as the applied force increases until it reaches its maximum possible. Then the object starts to move and the kinetic frictional force takes over. An object not, or excuse me, an object sliding down an incline has three forces acting on it. The normal force, pull of gravity, and the frictional force. The normal force, as we've just discussed, is always perpendicular to the surface. The friction force is always parallel to the surface, um, and you can say it's parallel to the interface between those two surfaces. The gravitational force always points directly downward in our flat Earth approximation. If the object is at rest, the forces are the same, except that we use static frictional force, and of course, the sum of the, of the forces in each dimension or each direction is zero. The textbook's lecture here does not say, state explicitly, but I think it needs to be stated explicitly, that the force of friction always opposes motion. So the, I should say the force of kinetic friction always opposes the motion of an object. It's always opposite in direction to the motion. And then the force of static friction always opposes the intent to move. So the motion of this block is sliding down the plane. So the force of uh, kinetic or static friction will be up the plane. And we'll see more of that in uh, the examples about to happen.